How you going there? I uh, was walking the dogs up by the cliffs and I saw some car wire working out in the bay and they haven't been out there for like three or four weeks. I thought, holy we can get a feed of car wire because I'm really missing eating fish. So it's getting late, I've got about, oh shit, maybe half an hour of sun. I shouldn't even be going out. Took Bob out this morning and woofa. So this morning I went out with just Bob, left everything behind, left the camera behind, and he caught that little pig. And you know, I just didn't really, really enjoy it. I mean it was fun, but the whole time I was thinking, oh I should have been bloody camera, this is awesome, he's got it by himself and this and that, and I realised something that uh, I really enjoy making YouTube clips. It gives me a lot of pleasure. I love hunting, but I also like creating a story. It's just something I like to share with people and create. So I'm not gonna leave my camera behind too many times again because I sort of, uh, I don't know, is it, is it a problem? Well, as the old saying goes, it's only a problem when it becomes a problem. I need a torch, because it's gonna be dark. I've got my torch, right, and I've got my GoPro. That's all I've got. See down by the water. Got a can of creamy rice and hopefully some fish to catch because that's all dinner will be tonight. Dead low tide. All the boats are all sort of facing all different ways. The tide is as low as it can get, so I might struggle to get across the bar. Poke up. Good dog. This is the first time I've ever gone out when the sun is going down. As you can see, it's virtually gone down. But it is a full moon tonight, so uh, we might be fishing in the moonlight. It's cold too. The water's clear enough to maybe see some flounder, but hopefully we'll get onto some car wire there. Because I haven't been out for a long time. I can't see where the birds are now, it looks like they've gone. So the way out here, not that far up the coast, probably, I don't know, 4K maybe. But the uh, boarding stopped. They're all just cruising, sitting on the water, chilling out. So the fish have been, and you can see over there just how many birds there are. As far as the eye can see. Which is bloody good, because it means the car white are back in the bay. So I'll put a lure out anyway. Not much going on out here, is there, Poe? Lots of birds, but no fish life. Beautiful night. Bloody cracker. Well, there's thousands of birds out here. Literally. From there, right up to there. And no action on the water. So what I saw from land was just birds sitting on the water and not a boil up. Maybe they've come in because the storm's coming. Normally I follow the birds for the fish, but they also come in to get away from storms and bad weather. So we could be in for some bad weather. So I'm out here with the boat. And it's rock bottom low tide right now. I'm going to try and scrape back in across the bar, but it's going to be bloody dodgy. I've got a spear on board and hopefully a torch somewhere in the boat, so I might try and spear a flounder. But I don't rate my charts. It might be just a can of uh, riced cream corn for dinner and no fish. Oh, it's fishing. There's the occasional pig that we get on Rabbit Island here. You're not allowed to hunt on there with dogs. The pose winding right now, which makes me think there might be a pig on there. She's definitely windy. She's 
I've got no tracking collars, I've got no gear at all, so she can stay on the boat. It's an absolute pearl of a night for floundering. Got Pro Keep Me Company and the uh, water is just perfectly clear for seeing a flounder. But I haven't seen one yet and I've been out for about an hour on the water. It's a small fish, no flat fish. So I'm just letting myself drift down here with the tide and hopefully something will come along. Pretty sure we've got a flounder there. Hard to see, but yeah, it looks like a flounder. That's a fucking flounder. There's a flounder right there. It's in my left hand. Got him. Bastard. There he goes. Beauty right through the head. Woohoo! Look at that, Poe. Flounder. Hey, what's that, Poe? Hey, there's some fish. It's a beauty too, isn't it? What size is that, hey? Hey? Geez, we're lucky, just got him in the gills. Look at the beauty. All the plans you make can go right at the bloody window if you're not firing on all cylinders. And last night I got really, really cold after I caught that flounder. And I bought the boat up, got it in the trailer by myself, and got it up onto the beach. And I was going to make a fire, and I just hit the wall. I've been going hard all day, and I just felt like there was no energy doing anything. The extent of my dinner was this, which I've just taken out of the truck, eaten with a quality fork. And I went home and crashed. And all day I've been thinking about eating that flounder, so right now I'm going to cook it up. It's still in the blue bin with the ice, so it'll be fine. So let's get cooking. Just a wee tip, if you want to skin your flounder, if you do, you don't like the skin, uh, do your cut with your knife in there and you can peel it right back. The other side is so thin you hardly have to skin it at all, but uh, that's the way you skin the top. So when you're gutting your flounder, like every animal, the guts is on the bottom, there's the top of the head, soft, hard, so that's where you're going to gut in there. When you're gutting, this is the way I do it, uh, you can feel where the meat is and the guts, there's a definite ridge there. So poke your knife in and just a wee cut down here, it's not a very big gut, and then you can take this out and leave the row in. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to diamond score the fish, like so. This means that the heat
heat is going to get through the fish because it's quite a thick fish and also when you're eating it, it makes it really nice for getting little diamond morsels out and eating them. Ginger. This high carbon steel Japanese knife was gifted to me by knife maker Ross. He's given me a few knives, he's a good bastard. I dropped him off some venison the other day. He's taught me quite a bit about knives, Ross. This garlic was gifted to me by number one good bastard Stu Dreva. It's grown in the Catlins where he lives and Stu sent me a few bits and pieces. Also sent me some chilli which I'm going to be putting in this dish a little bit. You guys could smell what I could smell. Our garlic with our ginger. Chop it all onto each other. It's going to do it. Just add a little bit of heat to our fish. Just a little bit. Now another thing you can cook with flounder if you haven't tried it is banana. I'm not doing it today but I have experimented and it tastes good. You can stuff it with banana. And what I'm going to do so I don't get just a whole cluster of chilli in one place is I'm now going to mix it all into this again and go right through. So we get a nice even. We're going to get heat off the ginger anyway. This is going to be quite spicy. And pepper again, it's a bit of a season. I'm going to hold it like this and rub it so it goes in between and then get my garlic, ginger and chilli. Put that on there as well. Making sure it goes in each little diamond. Like so. Stuff it all in. On that side, same again here. I'm gonna rub it all on. If we go like this, you can get it in the gaps. So I want to go right inside. And we also want to stuff the, the stomach cavity with some too. Just down in there. A bit of plain flour. This stuff is so cheap to buy, $1.90 for that, good value. Nice Himalayan pink salt into the flour. And some nice peppercorns in there as well. And we're going to put out the flour on top, like so, Leave the whole fish, and we are just about ready to hit the pan, so I'm going to leave it about five minutes just to let the moisture get all around the flour and then we'll come back to it very shortly and stick it in the pan. I've just put a little bit in the pan just to test it, the old float test, it's good to go. When you lay your fish in the pan, lay away from yourself. Like this. <laughs> the fish isn't going to play ball. Here we go. Now when it's in there, don't be tempted to turn it over. You only do one side at a time. Because it will break up because you've cut it. There's no muscle really holding the fish together. So when that side's done, then turn it over, then do the other side. I really like using cast iron because it's an even heat all over. It's a great way to cook stuff. I'm going to probably give that about six minutes on that side and then turn it over. The trick with fish always is to not overcook it. Right, eh? This has had about six minutes, so I'm going to turn this guy over. Hopefully one piece. Lovely.
Oh yeah, it looks good, eh, duck? Do you like some of that? <coughs> nah, it's for me, you can't have it. <coughs> nah, nah, that's for me. Go on, way go. You've had your feed. <coughs> Look at the fish just breaking away. Oh, it is delicious. This is a part I've been looking forward to all day. Hey, good luck giving this a crack. The stuck's come over here trying to chance a bit of fish. Oh, I don't think so, mate. You can also put a bit of dill on it and uh, try experimenting that with bananas, like I said with flounder. That's a good one. This is just nice. Fish always taste just like meat, so much better straight off the bone. This is a really great way to do flounder. Give it a crack. You'll enjoy it. Good luck with your own fishing, hunting, cooking, whatever you're doing. And uh, be good. If you can't be good, be careful. See you later.